All right, so you've gotten comfortable and you've started to build something like this. Let's get in and start really ramping this up. And I just want to show you how cool this is that you can go in and start just adding things. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a sphere. And I'm going to add a sphere, let's say, right there. And you may not know this, but I placed it very specifically. And it has anatomical significance. Basically, this is going to be the trapezius along the top. Okay, this curve. And then on the bottom, that's going to be the lat. And so I made that, I, I pushed it out as far as I thought I really wanted the form to go because then we're going to put the triceps and, you know, the arms, the bulk of the arms are going to get kind of really pushed outwards. And, and we'll go from there. But that gives them a nice healthy size. If you look at it from a side view, it's no longer a nice profile, it's a tumor. So you got to be able to know how to adjust this form as well. So the way you do that is you go to move, you drag out an action line, and then you select this far red dot and just move that in. Just to thin it. And then still with move on, center white dot, and reposition, red, white, red, white. And what we're looking for is just that point when the anatomy works. When we get uh, when we get that kind of pull for the neck, we're going to have a plane for the shoulders, we're going to have a straight plane down for the scapula, and then a little bit of volume for the lat and the erector spinae, and then a little bit of that last group of the erector spinae. Looks like we're going to add some more in there, and we definitely need to add uh, more in terms of the butt. And we're going to get to the legs, don't worry. And also, I have to admit, at this early stage, the shoulders went way too far forward. Okay, so that's a big problem I'm going to have to adjust. Once you've got it roughly where you want it, then you just control, click, and drag, control, click, and drag, and move on to the next piece. So because it's going to bug me, I'm going to come into the move brush, and I'm going to just move that shoulder back. I just know that that would bug me forever. All right, so we added in a little bit of volume there. We can add in a bunch more. So we can come in, and uh, if you wanted to, you could just add volume in here. Move brush, squeeze that stuff in. But in large part, there are other ways to do what I'm doing right now. Although. I don't know if you're catching this, but it's kind of cool that right there I'm actually indicating the um, external oblique and setting it up to eventually come in. So it's, it's like, once you get comfortable with it, it is like you are laying down pellets of clay. Okay, I'm going to come into the move brush, and these, are, these pellets of clay that I'm placing, they are editable. So you can put a pellet of clay and then get in there and start to adjust the shape of it to really hone in and make sure it is filling the volume that you want it to. Okay, I'm going to just pull that external oblique. Yeah, there we go. Integrate it in there. Pull it up. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I love that. Let's pull it straight up because we're going to have to increase the size of that rib cage. Control, click, and drag. Control, click, and drag. You're actually adding form exactly the way you would in clay. Let's do the same with the pectoralis. We're going to go insert sphere. We're going to basically put some breasts in there. Come into the move option. Press shift. Drag this down. You don't really have to press shift because you can skew it, but I like to press shift. Okay, drag out an action line again, move these guys over. I'm going to undo and come in. Now, important to know this second head mark is a nipple line. 
So you need to be able to have the nipple kind of take up that realm. Another thing that might be cool, let's just pull that action line off. Okay, and I pull it off by selecting this line in between them. But you can actually drag an action line up, go to rotate. Let's turn the floor off so you can see that better. And you see how right now these are just straight blocks, right? And that's not how pec the pectoralis works. What we want to do with rotate on and the center white dot is we want to just start to twist them so that you're bending them so that they wrap around the rib cage that's I make you know this is awesome to be able to do this in my opinion is awesome scale I'm sorry move I'm gonna select the red dot and just make the pectoralis larger really have it spread from the pit of the neck to just below that two head mark Okay, and in fact that's I think too much so what I'll do is get it halfway there and then move it up keep this second head mark in your mind don't lose track of that if your breasts get too far your pectoralis let me not confuse us but if your pectoralis gets too um, low you know it really starts to mess things up with the with the rest of your sculpt Okay. Control, click and drag, control, click and drag. Move brush and instead of relying on another sphere or something like that, I'm just switching to the clay brush and I'm going to have the abdominals kind of match up. I'm going to sculpt a little bit in there for the rib cage to have it match the external obliques. I'm going to give the abdomen a little bit of a hit. That hit is going to line up with the three heads so that the belly button would be right there. So we're going to have this extra form that's going to hang out there. the armpit in a little bit package just to set up the pubic bone control click and drag and you've got it remeshed so we have a bit of a pellet sculpt at this point you know, and by pellet, I mean the old school method where they would just lay down a little piece of clay, a little piece of clay, a little piece of clay, and slowly build it up. And I think the form is really nice. You know, it's really solid. Okay, there's things we need to do, like put C7 in, but we're doing quite well. So let's get in and start to work on the pelvic bone. Now, we know that there is a something called the tensor fascia latte and I can't help myself I mean this is so cool to be able to do this I'm gonna select scale scale this down but I'm actually putting in strokes of clay that fit the anatomy I want to be there move center white line moves it out drag this and let's get a little bit of a rotation move center white line side view drag out another action line get it lined up because the anterior superior iliac spine is going to be right there so then our rectus I'm sorry not our rectus but our tensor fascia latte will come in there the rectus femoris comes out the gluteus medius along the ilium we're going to have some space in there for the great trochanter and then we really got to get a little bit more uh, junk in the trunk. Okay. Pull that back. Alright. Control, click and drag. 
Uh, I'm not happy with that. Yeah, it started to really get in the way of where I was going to put the um, the uh, great trochanter. I'm also going to take it down a bit. It doesn't need to angle that much. That was too much. Basically, it was definitely getting in the way of the great trochanter. So let's go in with uh, insert sphere. I'm going to turn my lines on here, and let's just give them a bit. Let's do it from out here. There. I want to avoid them touching for now. And if you want, you can immediately just switch to the move brush and start to shape this. There's no reason not to. Notice I flattened it and then pulled it in. Let me get these guys closer together. If I want them any closer than they are right now, I'm going to have to use uh, inflate. Okay, let's get my floor. So, yes. We're going to have... Let me get that draw out of the way. Pubic symphysis. Okay, and then this is going to create the anterior superior iliac spine, which gives us the ilium, which then gets us set up for the sacrum, which then is going to get us set up for the, the great trochanter, and the ischial spines are going to shoot off from there. And so uh, we're going to have those holes for the ischial spine. And then there's going to be muscles that connect. The rectus femoris is connecting to the inferior, the anterior inferior uh, iliac spine, and then the gluteus maximus is coming from the sacrum and from this band of the sacrum there, and, and then we're getting a lot of fat to give it volume. Okay, the hamstrings are coming from the ischial spine, so you need to make sure that they have some volume, and uh, and that you know you're able to represent this fairly co coherently. But what I'm really drawing your attention to is the ischial spines and the pubic symphysis and this drop from four heads. Okay, remember that's four. So you want the bottom of the butt to be below that. Okay, almost like you're just drawing a line, the circle. Oops, let me make a nice clean line. From the pubic symphysis, this nice gentle arc there. So drop the butt. and grab screen captures of this stuff as I do this. Part of that butt's going to be hard to figure out without the front and without reference, but I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to switch to move brush and I'm going to really just pull this stuff out a little bit. Okay, so I'm kind of happy. We have ourselves a very interesting, very slowly built up model. Okay, now I've kept the floor on so that you can at all points kind of see where things should be lining up. It might add some visual confusion, but definitely is going to help you understand exactly where these points should be in space. Now, the next thing we need to do is go in there and add the limbs and uh, start to really build all that out.